Hi everyone and welcome back to BioTeach, this time on a video covering nucleic acids and nucleotides. This information is relevant for A-level biology for all exam boards as well as BTEC Applied Science Unit 10 which looks at biological molecules. So I guess the first thing we need to understand is the monomers of nucleic acids. They're called nucleotides and many nucleotides bonded together will form molecules like DNA and RNA, both of which are involved in the transmission of inherited information. We also have nucleotide derivatives such as ATP and GTP, which are both involved in energy transfers. We'll talk about this more in a second. It's a bit easier if you can picture the nucleotide first. So here we have the components that make up a single nucleotide. We have a phosphate group, a 5-carbon or a pentose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. We say that ATP is known as a nucleotide derivative because it consists of an adenine or a nitrogenous base linked to a ribose sugar and three phosphate groups. So all three of these components of the nucleotide have to be bonded together to form one unit. You have to know that the phosphate group will bond with the fifth carbon in the pentose sugar in a condensation reaction. The bond that is formed is known as a phosphoester bond, which is highlighted by the yellow arrow. If you do not recall how a condensation reaction takes place, then click the link that's just flashed up on your screen and you can revise this topic. Next, you've got a bond that needs to be present between the nitrogenous base and the first carbon of the pentose sugar. In this case, the bond is a glycosidic bond, and we talked about these bonds when we looked at carbohydrates. If you need to revise this, please click on the link at the top of the video now, and it will take you to that particular content. You might wish to pause the video at this stage to draw this nucleotide as part of your revision notes. The two nucleic acids you need to know are DNA and RNA, both of which you've probably heard of from your GCSE studies. I've put together this comparison table so that you can add this to any revision notes you might do yourself. Feel free to pause the video to copy this table out at any stage in the next few minutes. So this table shows the four main differences between DNA and RNA. Firstly, DNA has deoxyribose as its pentose sugar, whereas RNA has ribose. You do not need to be able to draw these sugars as such, but I do have a slide later on showing you the differences between the two. The next section looks at the bases present in DNA and RNA. DNA has the four bases of adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine, whereas RNA has uracil instead of thymine. Note that RNA has the other three bases the same as DNA. DNA is a double-stranded molecule and RNA is a single-stranded molecule. I will talk about the three types of RNA towards the end of the video, so you'll probably understand that a little bit better at that stage. Lastly, we need to look at the relative length. DNA is made up of three billion base pairs, and research has shown that if it was stretched out, it would be around two to three meters long. Whereas the size of an RNA molecule will vary, but it will not be anywhere near as long as the DNA molecule. We should learn a little bit about the structure of the basis in this section, as it's important to understand how bonding between them occurs. There are two groups of bases, pyrimidines and purines. We'll firstly look at pyrimidines, which are the single ring structure that you can see on screen now. DNA contains pyrimidines of cytosine and thymine. RNA contains cytosine and uracil, as mentioned earlier. This image here shows the purine structures. These are double ringed based structures. Both DNA and RNA have purines adenine and guanine in their structures. Later in this video, I'll talk you through how the base pairing between the bases occurs. The next part we need to understand is the slight difference between the sugars of deoxyribose and ribose. If I didn't mention this earlier already, deoxyribose is the sugar that's present in DNA, hence the name deoxyribonucleic acid, and ribose is the sugar that's present in RNA, hence the name ribonucleic acid. The only difference in their structure is on the second carbon. You can see on the deoxyribose, the carbon 2 has two hydrogens bonded to it, whereas the, in the ribose, the carbon 2 has one hydrogen and one hydroxyl group, or the 1OH group at the bottom. As mentioned earlier, you do not need to remember how to draw these molecules, but it might be useful to know what the difference is. 
OK, so now that you know what a nucleotide is composed of, we need to look at how these monomers form the molecules of DNA and RNA. Nucleic acids have the capacity to store the information that controls cellular activity. The central nucleic acid is known as DNA. RNA is involved in the reading of the DNA information. All nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides linked together to form chains or strands. The strands vary in the sequence of bases found on each nucleotide, and it's the sequence that provides the genetic instructions for the cell. So this diagram that you have in front of you shows the five carbon sugar in the middle, with the carbons labelled up as one to five. During DNA replication, new nucleotides are added to the third carbon, otherwise known as the three prime end of the existing nucleotide chain. It's therefore said that DNA replication works in the five prime to three prime direction. We'll cover this more when we look at semi-conservative replication. Two nucleotides are linked together by a condensation reaction between the phosphate of one nucleotide and the sugar of another. This continues to happen until you have a chain of nucleotides. A single-stranded chain will form an RNA molecule, a bit like the one that's on the screen now. Note that the bases will vary between A, U, C or G in the RNA section. Although the RNA molecule is a single-stranded molecule, it is often found folded back on itself with complementary bases joined by hydrogen bonds. Before we get to know the structure of DNA, we should get a better understanding of base pairing. It was scientists Watson and Crick who have been credited with first describing the structure of DNA, although there is some level of controversy about this, which I'll tell you about another time. The structure of DNA shows the sugar phosphate forming a backbone with the bases on the inside. The backbones essentially run in opposite directions, which is known as anti-parallel. More on this in a second. This diagram here shows how base pairing occurs. We know already that thiamine will bind with adenine and cytosine to guanine. We need to understand that this is because a purine will always bind with a pyrimidine. A and T binding together forms two bonds between the two of them. This is because both bases have two spare hydrogens that can form hydrogen bonds between them. Cytosine and guanine have three hydrogen bases as there are three hydrogens that can form bonds in between. The purple and orange boxes on your screen now show where these bases would form bonds with a pentose sugar. The image here shows you a diagrammatical representation of a backbone and ladder-like structure of DNA. It is this ladder that will shape and twist into a corkscrew type shape like we're just about to see. I thought this diagram might also be helpful in understanding the ladder-like structure in more detail. We have here the phosphate and sugars attached to the bases in the center. This shows you the unwound version to show the relationship between the bases. The alternating phosphate and sugar molecules give the DNA molecule an asymmetrical structure. This asymmetrical structure gives DNA strand direction. Each strand runs in the opposite direction to the other. This is the bit where I mentioned it was anti-parallel. One runs one way and the other one runs the other way. The ends of the DNA strand are labelled the 5' prime and the 3' prime ends. The 5' prime end has a terminal phosphate group off the fifth carbon, and on this image it is shown on the left-hand side and is highlighted by that ring showing you the terminal phosphate group. The 3' prime end has a terminal hydroxyl group and this is the right-hand side strand. This image here shows you the space-filling model of DNA once it's all twisted in its double helix shape. Earlier, we talked about RNA. This part of the video is just to give you some brief information about the three types of RNA you need to know about. Firstly, we have messenger RNA or mRNA. This is transcribed or written from the DNA molecule and it carries a copy of genetic instructions from the nucleus to the ribosomes which live in the cytoplasm and the instructions are how we're going to make our proteins and our cells. We will look at protein synthesis very, very soon. The second type of RNA is known as transfer RNA or tRNA. This carries amino acids on the growing polypeptide chain during protein synthesis. One end of the tRNA molecule carries the genetic code in a three nucleotide sequence called the anticodon, and the longer end of it carries the amino acid. tRNA is a clover leaf shaped molecule because parts of itself will pair with itself by hydrogen bonding. 
And finally, we have ribosomal RNA or rRNA. This forms ribosomes from two separate ribosomal components, large and small, and assembles amino acids in the polypeptide chain. We will revisit these more when I cover protein synthesis. So that's all I have for you guys on this topic for now. I've had a number of requests for videos, so I'll be working on them in the next week or so and getting them out to you as soon as I can. Please make sure that you post any questions below this video, or you can reach out to us on Instagram at BioTeach London. Thanks so much for watching everyone and supporting BioTeach London. Bye for now.